Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to go over the Allay Paradox, or essentially play a game of Do You Violate Expected Utility Theory? So remember that we're talking about the assumptions of the actors in our models that we're using, and there's four preference rules that we need them to follow. The third one was independence over lotteries. We discussed that in the last video. So if you don't remember what that uh, axiom said, or you haven't watched that video yet, you should go back and do that before we go on to this little test. So I want you to begin by picking your preferred lottery here out of lottery A or lottery B. So lottery A is I'm going to give you a million dollars with 11% probability and zero dollars with 89% probability. Lottery B is where I give you $5 million with 10% probability and nothing with 90% probability. I'm asking you, which one of these do you prefer? If I could give you either Lottery A or Lottery B, which one would you want? So choose one, and what I want you to do is if you're on YouTube, to actually go to the comments section underneath this video and type in Lottery A or Lottery B, whichever one you prefer, and write that down for now. Okay, so once that's done, let's move on to these other two lotteries, Lottery C and Lottery D. In Lottery C, I give you a million dollars with certainty, and in Lottery D, I give you five million dollars with 10% probability, one million dollars with 89% probability, and nothing with probability 1%. And again, I want you to choose which one you prefer just between Lottery C and Lottery D. So forget about A and B for the moment. Just think about which one do you prefer between Lottery and C, uh, Lottery C and Lottery D. And again, I want you to write that on the next line in the comment section. So just write Lottery C or Lottery D. Do that now. And then I actually want you to submit that comment so I can see which ones you've chosen. All right, that way we can uh, run a little bit of an experiment here off of YouTube. Not very scientific, but still a little bit fun. So. Let's get to it. Did you choose Lottery C and Lottery B? If so, then guess what? You violate expected utility theory. What about if you chose Lottery A and Lottery D? Well, then once again, you violate expected utility theory. How about if you chose A and C or B and D, or maybe even said that you were indifferent between Lottery A and Lottery B, as well as being indifferent between Lottery C and Lottery D. If that's the case, then congratulations. We can actually represent your preferences with an expected utility function. Good job. So what's going on here? Why is it the case that you sh should prefer A and C or B and D or be indifferent between the two? Well, let's take a look at these lotteries once again, and actually let's take a closer look at them. So here we have a lottery B written as $5 million with 10% probability and $0 with 90% probability. I wanna rewrite that by decomposing this lottery into that. So now we have $5 million with 10% probability and I've changed $0 with 90% probability to $0 with 1% probability and $0 with 89% probability. And if you remember back from our independence video just last time, you should know that now we see 89% of the time you're getting $0 in both of these lotteries. So whatever is determining your preference between Lottery A and Lottery B must be whatever you prefer between winning a million dollars with 11% probability and winning $5 million with 10% probability and winning $0 with 1% probability. So if you prefer Lottery A, it's because you prefer $1 million with 11% probability over those other two things. And if you prefer Lottery B, it's because you prefer those other two things to winning a million dollars with 11% probability. That should be pretty straightforward just based off of what we did in the last video. Now, if we look between Lottery C and Lottery D, once again, I can decompose the first lottery here, Lottery C. Now it's $1 million with certainty, but I could also say that it's a $1 million with 11% probability and a $1 million with 89% probability. And once again, we now see that there's something common between these two lotteries. There's winning a million dollars with 89% probability in each of them. So whatever your preference is between Lottery C and Lottery D, well, it must be between those two things, right? It must be that you prefer either getting a million dollars with 11% probability, or you prefer winning $5 million with 10% probability and $0 with 1% probability. Now, you'll also notice that Lottery A and Lottery C are the same, and Lottery B and Lottery D are the same, minus those things that are in common between Lottery A and Lottery B, and also that are in common between Lottery C and Lottery D. So essentially, if you prefer Lottery A, then you prefer winning a million dollars with probability 11% to winning $5 million with 10% and winning $0 with 1%. And because that's the same thing going on between C and D, that means you also must prefer Lottery C to Lottery D. And it's also gonna go the other way around, where if you prefer Lottery B because of those two things, uh, then you're gonna have to prefer Lottery D because, again, of the same two things. So, did you get it wrong? Well, if that's the case, you're not alone. In lab experiments, people screw this up all the time. I'm sure if you go through the comments in the, the section on YouTube, you'll see that a lot of people also got it wrong. 
I think what's really going on here is that people aren't very good at seeing how these lotteries decompose in the manner that we did to see that these things are the same either here or here. That it's just not straightforward for a lot of people and that's causing most of the issue. But once we break it down, it actually does make sense that you have to prefer A and C or B and D. But absent this breakdown here and actually showing you visually what's going on, it might be a little bit difficult. So given that, you might be wondering, well, is independence an unreasonable expectation to have out of our actors? And I think the answer to that question is, well, kind of. So for mundane tasks, this is definitely a problem. And, you know, the Aleph paradox kind of shows that this is true. So this was a little bit of a mundane task here. I asked you just for fun to, to do this and suppose that you're actually in this situation and, you know, tell me what your preferences are. And... You know, you might have screwed it up, maybe you didn't, but I'm sure, again, if we look through the comments, we would see people who screwed up, and we also see this in lab experiments where people do screw it up as well. Um, but for important issues, it's actually a little bit unclear still. So, um, is the reason that in the LA experiment, and the experiment that we just performed, is the reason that you reported preferences that violated independence because you actually have preferences that violate independence, or because you were answering this question in a rational way? And you know, what do I mean by a rational way here? Well, suppose that you're actually taking this experiment. You have two choices, essentially. You can spend the time to really think about the two alternatives. You can spend the time thinking about lottery A and lottery B and everything that's in them. And you can also spend a lot of time thinking about lottery C and lottery D and everything that's in them, and maybe even spend the time decomposing these lotteries. And, you know, you could be doing that, or you could be trying to finish the experiment as quickly as humanly possible, because you're going to make $15 regardless of what you answer to that question. And I suspect that what's really going on here is that it's, it's number two for the most part. Uh, during these experiments, I think that a lot of what's going on here is that people are rationally trying to get the heck out of there as quickly as possible. I don't want to say that this is true for everybody, but I think that it is a sizable portion of the people who answer this uh, question with uh, preferences that do not satisfy independence. But I think that if we suppose that this experiment were real, suppose that you sat down in the experimenter's chair and I gave you these lotteries for real, so I was actually offering you millions of dollars potentially, well, now I have come up with something that has serious consequences to it. And so I suspect that when you're thinking about how you're going to answer this, you're actually going to be focusing a lot more on the, the outcomes that I'm giving you or the lotteries that I'm offering to you. You know, maybe if I gave you 24 hours to think things over and you came back and actually, after thinking about these things, which you actually are going to want to do because it's in your own self-interest now, because I'm actually going to be giving you millions of dollars potentially, that I think that you would report to me uh, independent preferences much more frequently than what we see in these experiments. So uh, to, to sum things up here, if we're talking about mundane issues, then you know we're probably going to have some problems. We saw that, of course, back when we did completeness. That also caused problems. So there's really nothing new there. Um, and then you know maybe we lose out on some people who, who nevertheless, uh, even after thinking about thinking these things, still has these uh, via I should say these violations of independence. Um, you know maybe we're losing a few more people there. But I don't think it's that big of a deal when we actually start talking about important issues which of course are the things that I actually want to be discussing anyway. I'm not going to really concern myself about the academic study of uninteresting phenomenon um, or unimportant phenomenon. So in that regard I don't think it's a huge issue but you know maybe it's just a little bit of an issue. It, there is some issue there um, and we, we kind of saw that we had a bit of an allusion to it with the LA paradox that we went over here. So that takes care of independence. And in the next lecture, in the last lecture of these preference rules, we will talk about continuity. Join me then.